All right, hey there, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jason Smith with a little something special today here on Next Weather. I'm doing a presentation tonight for the Eastern Shore chapter of the CCA. And so as a result of having that invitation, I put together a little presentation on weather and fishing, and I thought that would be something that maybe some folks would have interest in here on our streaming platforms and to kind of combine how weather has a big impact on fishing and also a little bit about boating safety. So let's take a look at this. I've got a PowerPoint presentation here and I'll pull that up. And so what we're gonna talk about would be general meteorological conditions. We'll also be talking about tides, um, the moon phase, and also water temperature and water clarity and salinity. So, all right, here we go. Uh, I got the PowerPoint up here. This is what things would look like on a plain boring day. High pressure sitting right over the top of us, light winds, ideal for boating conditions. If you pull up a surface map and you see a big H over the top of you, doesn't necessarily mean the fish will bite, but it does mean that we will have light winds. And uh, so when we have a more amp amplified pattern, excuse me, this is going a little bit fast here, and we start to see a situation like this where we have barrel, this is from earlier this week, crashing into the Texas coast. You got a counterclockwise flow around that area of low pressure and that's creating a lot of wind. You got those lines around the storm in Texas are pretty close together and that means real windy conditions and we still have a pretty good onshore flow on the outside edge of it in our area. That is less ideal when we have a tropical storm uh, coming ashore. So this is good, but that is bad. Having a tropical storm, obviously not a good situation. Uh, high pressure means that the winds are relatively light. You have sinking air. It also means you have stable conditions. Sometimes the fish react to approaching low pressure, but high pressure can also be uh, something that will have a, an effect on, in a positive way on the boating conditions. So let's talk a little bit about the sea breeze. And this is what happens under high pressure on a normal summertime day. During the day, the sun heats up the land. Now, the Gulf, the water temperatures stay the same. So it can get really hot, but out over the Gulf, the temperatures are still going to be running pretty close to what the water temperatures are. They're gonna be into the mid to upper 80s, but the land can get hotter than that. And so as the land heats up faster than the Gulf, that creates a rising motion and the sea breeze rushes in to replace the rising air. It means the wind comes off the water in the afternoon and into the evening with the sea breeze under high pressure. Normal summertime pattern, the wind will be possibly even out of the north, we'll have a land breeze in the morning and then we'll have a sea breeze in the afternoon. So tides are also important and you may not be aware of this, but some days the tides are stronger than others. For example, early this month, around July 4th, we had a really strong tide range, and you can see we had a, a high tide of 1.9 feet and a low tide of negative 0.6. So that's a strong tide. That's about a two and a half foot tide range on July the 4th. Then we go to this weekend, and on the 9th, we have basically what we call a nip tide. Very little difference between high and low. And so there's not a lot of tide movement. Strong tide movement can be a good thing if you're fishing open areas like bays and flats. But if you're fishing restricted areas like bayous and points, and even some of the rigs at the mouth of the bay, that strong tide can be problematic. It's too much current. So when we have strong tide days, I fish in areas that are not as restricted and fish in the open areas. And when we have weak tide days, then you can fish areas that normally have too much current to fish, like the shoals around Dolphin Island or the rigs in the mouth of the bay or mouths of a bayou where we would normally just have the tide flying by. Fish can't even hold there. There's too much current. Well, you get into a neap tide like we have on the 9th and the 10th, and it's actually a little easier to fish. Moon phases, so speckled trout typically spawn before the full moon and leading up to the full moon. And so the good fishing is the about three days leading up to the full moon and the toughest fishing can be the couple of two or three days after the full moon. Fish are most active around the full moon and the new moon. When we have a half moon, that's usually when the fish are least active. So 
Uh, you can bet on the couple of days after the full moon and any time where we are around the uh, situation where we have a, a tide range that is more um, uh, conducive to being a neap tide and also when we're having those half moon conditions that's when we have the less, um, at least amount of fish activity. So interesting there. Looking at the marine forecast going forward, this is something you can get from NOAA. We also show it on Fox 10 News and things look good for the weekend. I want to talk about wave period just a bit before we go uh, wrap this thing up. You know, wave period is really important. So this will say, for example, you look at Friday, seas around two feet, wave detail west one foot at three seconds. Well, that is a very, very steep wave period. That means it's choppy. But when the wave period is say seven seconds, like it will be Saturday night, uh, or um, you go to Sunday, south one foot at six seconds, becoming south one foot at six seconds, that's ideal uh, there. So uh, definitely something that is a positive there. Also looking at the River levels, the Mobile River at Berry Steam Plant can be important, making sure you don't have too much fresh water coming into the bay. And right now it's tidal, it's perfect. But once Berry Steam Plant gets up around six or seven, it can be problematic. This is a live picture. Uh, you can get it at any time. It's called NASA Worldview. Just, just Google NASA Worldview. And you can see where the water's dirty and where it's clean. In this particular shot, it's pretty clean water in the lower part of the bay and out into the Gulf. And you can see the muddy water coming out the mouth of the Mississippi River. So this is another thing that weighs into it. You need to have good salinity to catch saltwater fish and you don't want to have too much fresh water in the system. So that will definitely have an impact on where you choose to fish. And this is one of those high pressure days where you could just see how sunny it is and how calm it is. And uh, if you have a little bit of a wind, it's always good to fish a lee shore where things are a little bit more protected. Kind of breeze through this here because I'm out of time. We've got to get ready for Fox 10 News at 3 p.m. But uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what I'm going to be focusing on tonight at the CCA. And as we get into it, uh, we'll revisit this topic and spend a little bit more time on it. Maybe, maybe do a good 20 or 30 minute breakdown on some of the different things that help you pick a good fishing day. So I just wanted to share that with you here on our streaming platforms for next weather today, and we'll revisit again next week.